Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And this one again is on the Parry Dakar collection. This is gonna be bike number four. So hopefully you've already watched the Yamaha XT500 and then the BMW R80 GS Parry Dakar edition and the XL500R Parry Dakar edition. Today's bike is another Honda, the Honda Africa Twin 650. This is the RD03. Now it was a 750 version that actually won Parry Dakar and it is a legendary bike, this one, because Honda wanted, just went right back to the drawing board to design the most perfect Parry Dakar bike. And it had Cyril Nouveau on board and between them, they came up with the perfect bike to win Paris Dakar. And that was the Africa Twin. Now I've got two examples here because this one I'm just wheeling out now is called the Marathon. And this is a very special um, bike indeed because this was actually the privateer's bike. If you ent wanted to enter Paris Dakar and you weren't a works rider and you wanted to take an Africa Twin, well, 50 of these Maravan edition um, Africa Twins were produced by the French importer for privateers to ride in the actual race. This particular bike didn't actually enter Paris Dakar, but it's built up from the, it's like a replica with the exact, the right parts. But I'm going to use this example here. This is a absolutely standard 1988 Africa Twin. What's slightly odd about the RD03, this is a 650 Honda, there's a 750 Africa Twin, the RD04. That came to the UK in limited numbers, but the RD03 was only on sale in Europe um, and also Japan. Didn't actually come to the UK, it's before the um, UK bikers had really got into their adventure bikes. But my goodness, it's beautifully made. Um, the white frame sort of synthesizes the HRC involvement, Honda uh, Racing uh, Company involvement. But that is a V-twin and the most exquisite water-cooled engine. And as I say, Honda engineers looked what you needed to do to win Paris Dakar. You needed a big tank. You wanted ultra reliability. So they're twin plug heads, separate ignition systems. So it could always um, spark whatever was going on super reliable, the water cooled, helped in the desert. It's got fans here as well. Massive, great sump guards protecting everything and just got this reputation for being basically a bulletproof um, sort of unit. And I just love the colors of it. Absolutely wonderful. And also with the gold rims as well as a sort of signature, just looks the part. And it, Honda soon realized they got a bit of a hit on their hands and that's why they went more productionized with the RD04 followed by the RD07. But the RD03 for me and for many others is the collector edition of the Africa Twin. And boy, did it do well at, um, in Paris Dakar itself as well. It actually won the race four years on the trot. The first one it entered and then won the next three years on the trot. So four titles in all. And then they retired in 1989 to leave the um, field open for some other bikes, including Yamaha. But um, this, this is the bike that really established, I think, the, the adventure market because it was so loved by everyone who owned them and just that reliability, that Hondaness shone through. Unfortunately, I don't actually own this bike anymore because I sold it to buy this marathon edition, um, but it's a good friend and because of COVID, he hasn't actually collected it. I might just mention this as well. These are my little CTEC chargers and they're very good because they're connected to the battery all the time. And I can see because that's flashing amber, I need to put that on charge. So I will quickly do that. But um, yeah, they're just a very easy thing. You just connect the charger to it when you see it flashing like that. But anyway, the Honda uh, Africa Twin Marathon Edition is this one. Um, and this one, completely different. Monster great tank on it. And then another fuel tank on, uh, behind here as well. Um, because it's all about the range, how far you can keep going at Dakar if you've entered it. You, you know, you don't want, the last thing you want to do is run out of fuel in the middle of Sahara Desert. The other thing was they didn't have, some of you forget in this period, they didn't actually have any sort of satellite navigation. And the seat opens there and that little cubby hole in there is actually to put a beacon in there so you can um, if you trigger your um, rescue beacon you're actually out of the race 
but the helicopter should be able to pick you up from wherever you are. So that was part of the safety equipment. This has got the, this is how you actually navigate in those days. You have to work out exactly where you are, have your precise mileometer, and then you, you actually um, push this through and you go at 80, 89.11 kilometers you turn left it's quite funny in the dunes there just you take a direction of 260 degrees a bleak at 220 here's a compass on there so you're sort of following your compass at crazy speeds um so yeah very different to how it is today when they actually it's all electronic um but they have the satellites to guide them where they actually are in the race some of the special features on the marathon edition, well, the most obvious thing, I suppose, is this different sort of sump guard, because here, this is for your toolkit in here, that's the container here, but here's your uh, few litres of drinking water. It was mandatory um, to enter Paris Dakar on a private bike. You had to have a water reserve on the bike as well, and that's what that sump guard is there. This thing is actually a separate stand, and that just means you can, if you have to um, mend a punch or whatever out in the desert, that's to prop up the bike along with the side stand and you can get the back wheel off the ground. But yeah, such a crazy thing, so much fuel. I think this is over 40 litres in here, and this one around here, that's 18 litres in the tank. So 60 litres of fuel, which compares to the little Yamaha XT500 as standard, eight litres. Completely different sort of machine when they got to this. Oh, another little thing, fun feature on this one. This was a, it's got this light on it, because when you're in a desert, you're throwing up a lot of dust, and you want people to be able to see there's a big truck coming or a car catching you up. That's your giant sort of fog light. So it shines through the dust storm that you're kicking up. And that's another little feature of the marathon edition of the Africa Twin. So there we go. I'm going to take, well, I've got another Africa Twin. I'm a bit greedy on the Africa Twins because they are such a favourite. So I'm going to ride that one and this marathon edition take it outside now show you how it all performs okay now i've got two africa twins out this one you haven't seen before that's obviously the marathon edition i've got this one and you're thinking cool that looks a bit untidy a bit scruffy this one has had a life this is the one my son uses it's it's the very first one i got in 2014 this has been across the pyrenees it's been out to the sahara desert it's done a dakar stage and this is the state it came back from the dakar stage my son is so proud of that journey he did on it and what the experience he had he never wants to clean it again because this is genuine moroccan sahara mud we actually ended up in quite a wet state so that's why it looks a bit a bit ropey but don't worry about that bit now this one is also prepared to do sand raiders we're off to do a, an event in morocco um, so you see it's double cabled if i uh, how can you see yeah there we are so it's got a spare cable all there ready these are proper competition tires and there's a what is termed a moose in here so that hasn't actually got air in it um, that is moose so you cannot get a puncher on it the rear has got air in it um, but it is a competition tire and uh, I just got both out because there's quite a difference between them and the way they ride such a smooth engine obviously electric start um, it's this narrowness here, this tank, and the side panels, we'll look on the other bike, they're almost in line with the frame, and it's particularly narrow, and you think, well, what does that matter? Well, it does actually matter off-road a lot, because this bike just feels the most natural on the pegs like this. I think it's probably narrower than my other, the smaller bikes I've got in the garage, and you cannot believe how natural it feels to be up on the pegs on this bike. Just, and you can rest your legs against it there. Softer seat. It is, it's quite an extraordinary bike. And it was the original. <laughs> Much more power now. A different sort of feel to it completely. Well, we've moved up in the weight scales now. We're probably just over 200 kilos, 210 kilos with fuel in here. But I can move it around just with my feet. I'm doing that, I'm not steering at the arms. I'm changing the weight on my feet, get around the cow pats. They've just come out of here, that's why we slightly changed the route. And that is what's so lovely about the Africa Twin, 
is the narrowness just where your legs are and where the pegs are. This is a funny jump because it's vertical at the end. So you sort of hang in the air like that. But God, it's a nice bike this. You can get the tail out as well, which is quite nice. Jump over here. You just got to, you just got to be mindful of the weight. The fact you've actually got, yeah, 200 kilos underneath you, and speed helps because you're sort of relying on the gyroscopic nature of the wheels spinning round, and that keeps you upright. If you go slow, then it becomes a balancing competition, and I think it's a bit harder. But on here. This is such, as I say, it, does, it feels funny when up here, whoa! It is a nice thing, suspension. I can just feel it slightly bottoming out. But you know, for a, this is a nice thing, it's not quite, it's quite quick enough really. Bumps. It's just the suspension's working quite hard. It's got a multi-link um, suspension at the rear. But I think the shocker could do with a bit of a rebuild or a bit of a tighten up. And this one I can aim at the storms. Steepest part of the wall, and up it goes. No problem at all. The other slight downside of the bigger bikes, these Dakar bikes, it's, is there's too much weight. You see, you just haven't quite got the engine braking of the smaller bikes just because of the mass of the bike is that much more <laughs> so I head up again there we go much more torque from the 650cc and you know it's got yes it's got the single disc on it and the 750 comes with a twin disc front for what for Dakar brakes Brakes are sort of auxiliary, they're not a way of winning Dakar by having good brakes, so that's why this has a single disc at the front for a bit of lightness, and it's absolutely fine. Let's see what it does over here. Yeah, just feels really nice. A really nice bike, thoroughly recommended, and it sort of got me hooked on these Dakar bikes. And Charlie just loves this, and I can quite see why. It's so on your side for off-roading, you can make a big bike do very silly things. I think we paid about 1,500 quid for this bike 2014. I think we've had our money's worth from it, to say the least. Well, something I should have said in the garage, really, if you look at the front mudguard, how enclosed all this is, how tight it is to the wheel. These bikes are not built for mud, they're built for desert. And that's why the mudguard is wrapped around the front wheel, because it's aerodynamics. And that's why it's got the fairing as well here, because it's all about speed now. Um, so this is the real generation change between the bikes, between that little, like the XT500 and that XL500R. These bikes, which if you've got a good enough rider, he'll be able to do the technical bits, but it'd be faster in the desert on the flat out bits. And that just adds a few more miles an hour. These are, I think 112 miles an hour rated something like that but yeah the marathon so instantly it's wider here you can sort of see how on here the frame is sort of in line with that on this one it's not at all and um, so yeah that's the big difference with between the two bikes let's just start it up deeper but all the same here part of obviously this and the compass and things and it's just this wider tank here anyway let's go and see how it behaves in the field this isn't on the competition tires this is on XTC80 tires which are a pretty good compromise they're so much nicer on the road the trouble with the competition uh, nobblies is they're really not nice on road and I do use this on the road while the other Africa twin is purely it's kitted out to go and do events right Now what I noticed on this one, it's not any heavier, I might just close that up so you can hear me. It's not any heavier, 
but it's just not quite as nimble because you it doesn't feel so natural on the pegs it's not bad because it's still got those africa twin jeans in it the rdo3 jeans and it's got a this has actually got a 700cc motor in it rather than 650 it's just a um, slightly bigger piston slight rebore it's only two mil on the pistons but it's got new suspension on it um, and uh, it just feels that much tighter than the other one Let's see what it's like up here it's so funny going up here Whoa. <laughs> and then it just lands you can tell there it was smoother on the landing than the older one but that's what happens when you have worn out suspension still got a turn of speed though let's try it over here up we go exciting bike they just I just like them instead of road bikes but I'm very lucky to have a farm to muck about on as you can see what you look for on an off-road bike what I look for is a, is a, a, a what we term a soft clutch a really friendly clutch because actually when you're maneuvering you ride the clutch the trick with off-road road riding is to have brilliant clutch control so you're quite often on technical stuff now I'm just slipping the clutch, so I'm holding the power while I am slipping the clutch and I can't really show it here because it's not a good enough bit but um, that is the secret to off-road riding is to use the clutch uh, way more than you would on a road bike now I think this will go up here and up we go easy right, let's see what it does over here, can't help myself love that deep bellow. I don't know if it comes over on the mic, but it's a great sound, this one. Whoa! <laughs> Second bounce on the way down. Yeah, that was plenty of air. Right, what I'm going to do now is head up there, just go and see how fast this goes across the field. Every time I come down here, I must think I must clip that bloody head because it just throws you into the trees like that. Anyway, important work to be done. Let's see what this thing can do down here. I think it might be quite quick, this thing. Can't bring the power down. Right, different sort of bike. Maximum power at 8,000 RPM this thing. I think there was 135 there. Oh, and it wriggles to a stop. What a flipping machine this is. Whew. Whew. That was quite something going across the field at that sort of speed. Um, yeah, they're pretty special bikes, these RDO3 Africa Twins. Choosing between the two, the standard bike is such an amazing off-road tool. Um, it's that 200 kilos you sort of concern yourself, but then you use it, the narrow tank, the perfectly placed foot pegs, handlebars, the grunt from that engine, the reliability, the pro-link suspension, it's all multi-link suspension down here, and you can do things with it you just don't think you can do with a 200 kilo bike. The Marathon Edition is something else again. It's slightly compromised from a use point of view because it's just bigger, um, it's more imposing, um, but it's just just a, such an iconic sort of bike. It's built to do a job, and that's to win Dakar. Well, it's class of Dakar. So the enormous tanks, the 42 litres in there, and then the additional 18 litres in here. This, with its rebuilt suspension, it's slightly more torque, really, rather than horsepower, is a joy to ride. This is it's actually glass fibre. This is carbon fibre. It doesn't actually weigh that much more than the standard bike. And it's just to have all this and just think of those guys charging across the desert. Seat isn't as comfortable, but it doesn't matter. It's there to win Dakar, so that's why. It's all to save weight. So feel very lucky to own both examples of the Honda Africa Twin RDO3, the 650 version. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video. More bike videos coming on very soon, and the next one, one of my favourite bikes, Kajiva Elephant 900 IE, the bike that won Dakar in 19. 
1990. So a very special bike. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, we'll keep watching because there'll be some more bike videos coming along very soon.